So we'll start off with five common conditions which affect periventricular white matter to begin with. The commonest one which you'll come across is metachromatic leukodystrophy which is an autosomal recessive disorder which happens due to deficiency of aryl sulfatase A enzyme in the brain. Clinical onset is between 4 to 8 years of age and in the blood you will have positive metachromatic reaction and decrease in aryl sulfatase A enzyme which is diagnostic. On imaging you look for what is called as butterfly sign and tigroid pattern. So you will get periventricular white matter affection which will be initially fluffy and discrete which will eventually and slowly will get conglomerate but if you see subcortical U fibers all around they are unaffected. On flare because this looks like butterfly this pattern of periventricular white matter affection in metachromatic leukodystrophy is called as butterfly pattern. As it progresses further, they get conglomerate and you have lines of grey in between the affected white matter which gives rise to tigroid pattern and this happens because the white matter adjoining the venules which move from periphery to center towards central venous drainage system allow little bit of protection of white matter around it. So white matter around these venules does not get affected and remains grey. White matter away from venules gets affected and becomes white. So these lines of black and white give rise to what is called as tigrod pattern. What you must remember this tigroid pattern is also seen in Perizias Musbacher but it is seen in subcortical U fibers and not in the periventricular region. Next common condition which affects periventricular white matter to begin with is called as Crabbe's disease which is again an autosomal recessive disorder which happens due to deficiency of beta galactosidase 1 enzyme which leads to accumulation of galactocerebrosidase in the brain which damages white matter initially and basal ganglia and thalami little later. Age of onset is earlier compared to MLD. Typically in the standard Krabbe's disease, the typical Krabbe's disease, your onset before 4 years of age and this is one condition where CT can be useful. Most of the other conditions CT has virtually no role. So you get these soft calcifications. These are two different patients in the basal ganglia and thalami. The same soft calcifications on MR look dark. So you look for periventricular white matter abnormalities and dark thalami or basal ganglia which is very typical of Krabbe's. What is also typical of Krabbe's is cerebral atrophy setting in early and symmetric hyperintensities of corticospinal tracts which happens because of Wallerian degeneration of pyramidal tracts. These are also present in adrenoleukodystrophy. Other thing that happens in Krabbe's is because of deposition of these abnormal metabolites in the cranial nerves, you get apparent thickening of these nerves. This is a borrowed image where there is deposition of metabolites in the optic chiasma. This is our own image of the same patient that we saw in the previous slide where the optic tracts appear much thickened compared to what you would expect normally. Next condition which involves periventricular white matter to begin with is adrenoleukodystrophy which is an X-linked recessive disorder which happens due to deficiency of acyl coenzyme A synthetase enzyme in the brain and in the adrenals and in the skin. So the classic 
subtype which affects preterm ma males is seen at 4 to 8 years of age and most of these males because it is X-linked would have dark skin which looks like bronze. Typical pattern of ALD is affection of occipital periventricular white matter to begin with. So, pattern of involvement in adrenalocodystrophy is posterior to anterior. So, areas involved are occipital white matter, corticospinal tracts and splenium or posterior half of corpus callosum. This is one condition where you get enhancement in the interface between the affected and unaffected white matter. And again, if you see this, this is classic. So, here is the affected white matter, here is the unaffected white matter. At the interface of progression of the disease, you see this enhancement. So, there are only two conditions which show enhancement. One is adenolocodystrophy and second is Alexander's. Fourth condition which affects periventricular white matter to begin with is phenylcutaneuria which happens due to deficiency of phenylalanine hydroxylase enzyme in the brain. Clinically, patients can be diagnosed because of presence of musty odor of all body secretions like urine, sweat, etc. These patients have hypopigmentation and patches of eczema on limbs. On MRI, you will see subtle symmetric fluffy periventricular hyperintensities which show restricted but ADC negative diffusion abnormality. In advanced cases, you get this extensive calcification in the basal ganglia and periventricular white matter. Lot of people use diffusion and absolute ADC values to check at response to ketone free diet on MRI. So, if the patient is responding, the ADC values will go on decreasing. If the patient is not responding, ADC values will go up and they correlate very well with serum level of ketones. Other thing that you look for is a peak at 3.37 ppm of phenylalanine on MR spectroscopy. The fifth condition which affects periventricular white matter to begin with and is quite interesting is MSUD or maple syrup urine disease. It is again an autosomal recessive di disorder which affects branched chain amino acid like leucine, isoleucine and valine. In the early stage of the disease, the diagnosis can be purely radiological. So, if there is a sibling which has MSUD, even before the child comes into crisis, you can diagnose this condition on fetal ultrasound or MRI. It can be diagnosed as early as day 1 of life when the child is asymptomatic. Child in crisis would smell like burnt sugar and that's why the disease is called as maple syrup urine disease. Classic appearance of this disease is restricted diffusion not only in the periventricular white matter but also in the posterior fossa. So, middle cerebellar peduncles, peridentate cerebellar white matter and pons would show restricted diffusion as is periventricular white matter, optic radiations and internal capsules. So, that was patient number 1, this is patient number 2. I think this was sibling, younger sibling of the previous patient. So, we had 3 or 4 children coming with MSUD from the same family. So, this edema is actually not true restriction of diffusion, but it is myelin splitting edema, which involves posterior limbs of internal capsule, optic radiations, corticospinal tracts, 
and very dented cerebellar white matter and middle cerebellar peduncles. Eventually, lot of atrophy and degeneration of brain parenchyma happens and then there is periventricular hyperindensity reaching up to subcortical leaf fibers and atrophy. Again, these are two different patients. Another patient showing myelin splitting edema in the internal capsules and periventricular white matter. So, they look like they are drawn by chalk. So, these were five conditions where we saw predominant affection of periventricular white matter. Now, we look at two conditions where there is subcortical white matter affection. These are two conditions, galactosemia and Pelizius Merzbacher. <laughs>